So since making his debut in 1938 Action Comics No. 1, Superman has forever been positioned as a bright shining light of comics, and over 70 years The Last Son of Krypton has become a bona fide pop culture icon and is famed for always finding a way to do the right thing in his quest to save the day. But not even Superman is completely flawless, and the big blue Boy Scout has carried out his fair share of boneheaded, illogical, tasteless or outright evil actions over the decades. And that's exactly what we're here to talk about today. As I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are the 10 worst things that Superman has ever done. Number 10. Paralyzing a football player. Superman Gridiron Hero So imagine that you're a young football hopeful looking to make yourself stand out in order to make a better future for you and your family. With the biggest game of your burgeoning career on the horizon, things suddenly take a turn for the worse when you are purposely paralyzed and replaced by a doppelganger. For Tommy Burke, that is precisely the situation that he found himself in way back in 1938's Action Comics No. 4. A story somewhat questionably titled Superman Gridiron Hero, this tale had Tommy left paralyzed after Superman infected him with a unique substance. And why would the ever-heroic last son of Krypton do such a thing? Well, that was so that he could alter his appearance to look like Tommy and take his place in the football team. Now, there was a paper-thin plot in here about a corrupt coach that Superman was trying to bring down, but the bigger take-home point of Gridiron Hero is that the Big Blue purposefully paralyzed an innocent young fella. If there was some semblance of a silver lining for Tommy Burke, it's that the bunch of touchdowns scored by the disguised superhero during this time led to Burke's ex-girlfriend getting back with him. Although in hindsight, the fact that she does this does make things seem rather superficial. Number 9. Eviscerating Dr. Light – Trinity War the New 52 was definitely a strange time for DC Comics. Deciding on a complete rebrand for its characters and titles, this relaunch left an immediate bad taste in the mouths of many, a long-time comic book fan for just how it presented certain heroes and villains. And right at the front of such a backlash, there was Superman. In terms of a particular New 52 moment that pissed off the masses, look no further than Supes' action against Dr. Light in 2013's Trinity War. While somebody taking a shot at your beloved is never a cool thing, regular Superman wouldn't go as far as to straight up murder that person. But that's not the case of the new 52 Superman though, for he uses his heat vision to literally melt the head of Dr. Light after Light accidentally fired an energy blast at Wonder Woman. Number 8. The Abuse of Jimmy Olsen – The Son of Superman for nearly as long as there's been a Superman, there's been a Jimmy Olsen. Debuting in Action Comics No. 6 way back way in 1938, just five issues after The Man of Steel's own debut, Jimmy is the longtime close friend of the Boy Scout, in addition to working with Clark at the Daily Planet. When in 1954 we saw him headline his own Superman's pal Jimmy Olsen book. Bizarrely, this title found Jimmy being abused by Cal L on a scarily frequent basis. The most messed up part of this came in Superman's pal Jimmy Olsen No. 30. The Last Son of Krypton adopts Jimmy here in much the same way that Bruce Wayne had adopted the likes of Dick Grayson and Tim Drake over the years, but unfortunately this all proved to be a disaster for the young Olsen. Rather than an idyllic life with his personal hero as a father figure, Jimmy was constantly bullied by Superman. What starts as name-calling soon escalated to working the boy like a dog and eventually got to the disturbing point where Soup set fire to the Father's Day present that Jimbo used his savings to buy for his new father. So such a dick was Superman here that Jimmy took legal action to get his adoption scrapped. Number 7. The Excessive Brutal Beating of Metropolis's Criminals Triple Threat Introduced in 1987, Gangbuster was a brutal Metropolis vigilante who patrolled the city's suicide slum. Jose Delgado was the man under the mask, and Gangbuster disappeared when Delgado damaged his spine. By the time of 1989's Triple Threat story, which culminated in Adventures of Superman No. 450, a new Gangbuster was cracking skulls in an even more severe and ferocious way than his predecessor. At this point, readers were introduced to a random new character called Matt. The insinuation was that Matt was Gangbuster and that he was DC Comics' spin on Marvel's Matt Murdock, aka Daredevil. With Guardian and Superman both separately trying to locate and stop Gangbuster and his vicious attacks, the big revelation is that Superman 
is Gangbuster. The revelation is made when a battle with the Guardian sees Gangbuster's outfit tear open to reveal the famed family symbol. So why did the Man of Steel decide to don a new mantle and to beat the absolute piss out of criminal elements? Well, the reason for this carnage-laced rampage from Supes was down to him having blackouts due to the guilt of having killed someone from an alternate dimension as part of a scheme from General Zod. Throw in some nefarious brain tinkering from Brainiac for good measure, and Cal L manifested a violent vigilante persona. Number 6. Sending Supergirl to an Orphanage The Supergirl from Krypton Action Comics number 252's The Supergirl from Krypton famously saw the full debut of Kara Zor-El, aka Supergirl. As the cousin of the Man of Steel, Kara had a similar journey to Earth as Kal-El, with her being sent to the planet by her parents after disaster struck. In the case of Kal, that disaster was the decimation of Krypton. Unbeknownst to Superman, a small part of Krypton managed to survive, and it was there that Kara was later born. But once that once safe haven came under threat from radiation, Kara's parents made the call to send her to Earth, where Superman was immediately on the scene once the Maid of Might's rocket crash landed. Once the pair realize that they're cousins, the Boy Scout promises to look after Kara, saying that he'll always be there for her and the whole scene is literally described as perhaps the happiest moment in Superman's life. But bafflingly, this panel of proclamations of family unity and love is then followed by a panel where Clark tells Supergirl that he's dumping her in an orphanage rather than letting her stay with him. Nice one, cuz. Number 5. Allowing the Alien Abduction of Pete Ross's Son To Live in Peace Nevermore while certain heroes embarked on darker, more serious stories through the Bronze Age of comics, the Superman tales of that time were often still remarkably cheesy or just outright made the Man of Steel look like a bit of a jackass. And one prime example of such jackass behavior came during 1978's DC Comics Presents No. 13, with the Boy Scout taking center stage in a tale dubbed To Live in Peace Nevermore. In this story, poor Pete Ross, as in Clark Kent's best pal who was also a widow by this point, has his son John abducted by an alien race. If that wasn't traumatic enough though, Superman actually had a chance to rescue the youngster but ultimately opted against doing so. Upon locating John, Cal el is informed by the Legion of Superheroes that the abduction of the kid is a pivotal part of ensuring peace in the future. Rather than doing what was right by his grieving high school pal, who is one of the few to know that Clark and Cal are one and the same, he just decides to leave John with the aliens. It's no surprise that the fallout of this was the disintegration of Ross's friendship with Superman and the loss of his only child resulted in Pete having a breakdown and finally being institutionalized. Seems fair, right? Number 4. Destroying people's homes just because they're poor Superman in the slums in Action Comics No. 8, Superman in the slums featured the Big Blue Boy Scout coming to the most ridiculous and most callous of decisions when realizing that a group of criminals originate from the poorest part of Metropolis. Inspired by a newspaper headline detailing a tragic cyclone disaster in Florida, Superman realizes that the best way to bring down crime levels in Metropolis is to, uh, well, apparently destroy the most struggling, desperate, low-income areas in the city. And so he literally takes his superpowers and a hammer to the houses of Metropolis's most poverty-stricken residents. In hindsight, this sort of disturbed, single-minded extreme approach from Superman was an accidental indicator of what the last son of Krypton was capable of in future stories like the whole, I don't know, Injustice Gods Among Us shenanigans, which we will definitely cover later. Number 3. Becoming a Government Lapdog The Dark Knight Returns Given his long-standing mantra of truth, justice, and the American way, Superman has often been aligned with the US government. In Frank Miller's seminal The Dark Knight Returns, though, this is taken to the extreme when the Man of Steel becomes the ultimate brainless government lapdog. With Bruce Wayne having hung up the cape and cowl a decade prior, this four-issue 1986 offering saw Bruce suit up once more after the nefarious mutants began to terrorize Gotham City. When Superman comes into this story, he's tied to the hip of President Ronald Reagan. And happy that Batman has resurfaced, with independently-minded superheroes being viewed as loose cannon vigilantes by authorities, Reagan debates what actions to take against the caped crusader. For Superman, he's tasked with warning, which is definitely read as threatening, his on-off BFF that he may have to take him down should the world's greatest detective carry on suiting up. Never one to shy away from a threat, though, Bruce implores Superman to do whatever he feels he has to. So blindly loyal to the US president is Superman here that he ends up eventually battling Batman in a fight that culminates in the Dark Knight's death. Granted, this demise would be a fake out that was planned ahead of time by Bats, but Superman didn't know that when he was beating his old pal to a pulp, all because the man in the Oval Office told him to do so. Number 2. Having Sex on Lois Lane's Grave 
beyond the reach of time. Now, having sex on anyone's grave is a disgusting, disturbing, and rather distasteful act to partake in, but it's made infinitely worse when you're having sex on the internal resting place of your deceased wife. In the Beyond the Reach of Time tale of the Adventures of Superman Annual Number 3, Lois dies just a handful of pages into the story, collapsing and dying alone at home due to a kick from her superpowered baby. Supes arrives on the scene just in time to hear his wife's final words, which were, I love you, and is obviously left utterly distraught at this loss. Well, so much for utterly distraught, mind, for Cal el is flirting with the alien princess Maxima just six pages after we've seen the funeral of Lois Lane, and the pair would eventually hook up on Lois's gravesite. Thankfully, this is all part of some what-if future conjured up by Wave Rider as part of a larger Armageddon 2001 story. And number one, everything in Injustice Gods Among Us. In all honesty, this entire list could be made up of incidents taken solely from this world of injustice. This alt-world DC realm debuted in 2013, with a prequel comic book title launched alongside the Injustice Gods Among Us video game. Here, the launching point for this whole skewed universe is that Superman was driven to insane villainy after the death of the pregnant Lois Lane. Not just did Lois die, of course, for it was Cal el who actually murdered his lover and unborn child after being duped into thinking he was facing doomsday. The mastermind behind said duped well, that would be the Joker, who likewise attached a switch to Lois's heart that caused Metropolis to be nuked once she died. Deciding that he was no longer going to play the nice guy, Superman punched a hole straight through the Clown Prince of Crime's chest and embarked on a change of character that saw him rule the world with an iron fist. In terms of the heinous acts carried out by the Boy Scout in this world, he killed Shazam by melting his face with heat vision, slaughtered Green Arrow, dumped Aquaman's home of Atlantis in the middle of the Sahara Desert, revealed Batman's secret identity to the world, and that was just the tip of the tyrannical iceberg. So yeah, not a nice guy. And there we go, my friends. Those were the 10 worst things that Superman has ever done. I hope that you enjoyed that, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below. As always, I've been Jules. You can go follow me over on Twitter at RetroJ, but the O is a zero. As always, I've been Jules. You have been awesome. Never forget that, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.